Hey, this is Tuxedo Mark, and welcome to another episode of Vlogtron. And, um, so I just watched episode two, Escape to Another Planet. And, uh, okay, so in this episode, it picks up immediately where the last one left off. They land on Planet Eris. Um,. They have to trek across the desert from where they crash landed uh, to get to the castle. Um, the legendary lion castle or whatever. Uh, so, they, they come under attack from like unseen natives hiding in caves or something like that. And they spend a lot of time trying to get uh, to the castle, and when they finally get there, they're let in. They're not sure by who, uh, but then the sky, um, some official in the court, uh, welcomes them, and um, he rehashes a lot of uh, the same backstory. We see probably the same flashback footage from. Uh, Episode 1, where Voltron uh, was split up to the five different lions and scattered as it fell back to Planet Argus. Now, here's something that I read that's a difference between the original anime and Voltron. In the original anime, um, Go Lion, the the goddess, as they call it, that split apart Voltron was the goddess of the universe. And in Voltron, they rewrote to be the space witch disguised as a goddess, which kind of ticks me off because, you know, <laughs> goddess of the universe, that sounds pretty cool. Um, but I guess they didn't want to offend the Christians or whatever. Um, anyway. So, Princess um, Allura is like, uh, she's in charge now, such as it is. Uh, she's, her father, the king, uh, had been killed, and I don't think they outright say it, but I mean, uh, she, she's, she's, the, she's in charge, even though she's still a princess, she should be queen, but... This is common in uh, many different animated shows and movies. Uh, I guess because princess sounds like a cuter title or whatever. Um, she's effectively the queen. Anyway, so there's five of them. They volunteer to pilot the uh, lion robots if they can find them. Uh, problem is, the king was the one that knew how to reform them into Voltron. Uh, but that's a problem for another time, I guess. Now, one, one aspect of the, of the writing in the series that I've discovered is it's often repetitive. Uh, here's an example. The, the official guys, like, we have managed to preserve our command center. Watch. And he presses bone or whatever, a port giant portrait on the wall lifts up, revealing a secret passage, and they walk into a computerized command center. And then Princess Allure is like, this is our command center. Yeah, we know. Um, also, there's a lot of talking back and forth, a lot of arguing, jokes, yeah, jokes, um, and it, it, it's like, I don't know, they, they, they just, what, they can't keep quiet is what I'm getting at, I guess. Um, Oh, there's also, like, a, such a thing as a space burger, I guess. I don't know if that's the name of, like, a, an interstellar, like, 
fast food chain or what, but as yeah, Speechburgers mentioned that when they approach the castle, they encounter space mice. Yeah, space mice. They're just regular mice, but in space on another planet. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so I the the uh, space explorers volunteer to be a new pilot of Voltron, and and Princess Alora and her official guy, uh, I forget his name, are all too eager to go along with it. There's, there's just like no background checks, no nothing. It's just like, okay, cool. Oh, and the guy's like, oh, here are your new uniforms. And they're like, thanks, but we don't really need clothes. We need Voltron. And he's like, please, it's royal tradition. So apparently they gotta wear the official I don't know, battle clothes of uh, Planet Eris. So, uh, what the nerdy kid is like, well, if it pleases Her Highness, then I, I guess why not? Let's suit up, everyone. So, next thing that uh, we see, they're, they've changed into their royal clothes. I, I guess they stripped off their old clothes to change into new clothes in the command center? I bet they pleased Her Highness. Uh, yeah, she was there too. I, I guess she must have watched. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, these, these five lions are scattered across the planet, so they gotta go and, uh, and, uh, locate them. And that'll be the plot of the next episode. Now, during the closing credits, I saw Princess Alora there, so I'm like, huh. I decided to go back and check the closing credits of episode one, and she's there too. So that's indeed where we first see her. In fact, she's part of a montage, they flash through characters one at a time, but it's only her and four other guys, so one of the guys is left out. Um, bit odd. Uh, anyway. So... Not much, not much else to say. I like Princess Alora. She's, uh... Let me make sure that I'm getting her name right. Yeah, Alora. Princess Alora. Why does that... That name sounds kind of familiar, but I swear I really didn't watch this show before. Is there another princess named Alora? Somewhere? No, I know the one on she is named Adora, so I'm not mixing those two up, but... I don't know. But anyway, so... I enjoyed this episode. Uh, one thing that I will, another thing about the, uh, this is about the voice acting, it's very stiff. Um, a lot of times it feels like the actors are just reading their lines off a script. It's like, I don't know how to describe it, um, it just feels kind of, and it, oh, when I said in the previous episode that Peter Cullen is the narrator, it's not to the extent of a narrator like on Robotech. He doesn't narrate the episode. He narrates the opening theme song and the next episode preview, and that's basically it. Uh, also, I noticed in episode one, he voiced like a minor character as well. Um, 
and that's about it, I guess. Uh, I think I'll watch two episodes per day. At this rate, I should have uh, the series completed in around two months. Yeah, probably like two months and three days or something like that. Um, yeah. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.